I wish I knew these 10 Premiere Pro shortcuts earlier in my filmmaking career. And not only because it saves me more time, but because as a solo filmmaker like myself, you spend way more hours behind the computer editing a video than you do behind a camera. And at that point, doing the simple actions inside Premiere Pro more efficiently makes the whole editing process way more painless. Hi guys, it's Joey. Let me tell you what the most beautiful thing is about these videos. If there is only one of these 15 things that you did not already knew, you win some. So I want you to grab a couple of post-it notes. And if there is something new for you, something that you want to implement in your workflow, then write it down on the post-it note and stick it on your computer or your mouse or your keyboard or whatever. It's super easy to fall into old patterns. And at that point, the post-it note is there to remind you, you can do that action more efficiently. So let's jump right into the first category. By the way, I'm editing on a Mac computer. So every time I say command, like CMD, it means that if you're on a Windows, you hit the control key on your keyboard. Keep that in mind. Let's start with some quick shortcuts to navigate on the timeline. The most common, of course, is zooming in and zooming out. I wish scrolling with your mouse while holding command on your keyboard was more seamless, but it isn't. So hitting the plus and minus key on your keyboard is my way to go. And did you know that hitting the backslash on your keyboard makes your timeline, like the content on your timeline, fitting your screen? The best way to have a good overview on what you did. Going to the beginning or the end of a clip by hitting the up and down button on your keyboard. If you want to do that manually by hand, I wish you good luck zooming in and out endlessly. Not really a keyboard shortcut, but definitely a shortcut is to double click in the beginning of a layer of a video or audio layer to make it bigger or smaller. Also, if it's like a really weird size, you can reset it to those two sizes. A trick to navigate not only in the timeline, but in Premiere itself, is to hit this key. It's called the back tick. And yes, I had to look that up. <laughs> it's probably in your left bottom corner and it makes every smaller window you're in, which you can define by the blue line around it, it makes it full screen. Super useful if you want to spot details in your program monitor or if you're busy finding clips in your file window. Now it's time for A-roll editing. And the first thing I'm doing when I'm starting a A-roll edit is to link my audio and my video together because most of the time I have like now separate audio and I want to link that together to the video. I do that with command L and that is link or unlink the audio and video depending on what it already is. It's way easier than hitting the right mouse button and search for link slash unlink. And when I'm linking these things together, I always keep the old audio there in case of emergency. But I want that audio to be muted. For that, I disable or enable the audio or separate clips. And you can do that by the right mouse button and then search for it. But it's easier to hit Command Shift E. I mostly use it for audio, but I also use it for like B-roll clips that I don't want to use anymore, but I don't want to delete it already. I disable it and put it on site. Then it's time to trim and cut your video. The most important process of your editing career and there are a lot of ways to do it. This is what I think is the best way, so bear with me. First of all, take that razor tool and throw it out of the window. Because even when you use the shortcuts to go to the tool, it's a waste of time. Also, deleting a part of the video the normal way is not efficient because of the gap it leaves. So instead of doing this, hit the C on your keyboard for the razor tool, make a cut here, make a second cut there, then hit the V to go to the normal tool, click on it to select it, then delete it, then hit the A on your keyboard for the select forward tool, grab everything on the right and shove it back to the cut. Then hit V on your keyboard for the normal tool and you can go on with reviewing your footage. These are a lot of steps to do a raw edit, even if you use the shortcuts on your keyboard for the tools. But there are two magic actions you need to know to make this quicker. And those are add edit 
and ripple delete. Add edit will make a cut on your video like instantly and with ripple delete you can delete something without having a gap because it automatically shoves the other part of the video back to where the cut was. If you put these two actions on a shortcut you get this. Go to the point, cut, go to the point, cut, select, delete, done. Now multiply the time you save by 500. I don't know how many cuts you make in a video and you got yourself a faster way of doing a raw edit. So I've put the add edit and the ripple delete on the Q and the W on my keyboard. That's because then I can always have my two fingers on the Q and W and my thumb on the space bar. I call it the magic triangle. <laughs> But then we're running into a problem because normally on the Q and the W there is a shortcut called Ripple Trim, which is also amazing. But let me tell you the difference between cutting and trimming. Cutting is making a cut in your video and trimming is dragging your video in the end or the beginning shorter or longer. So if you hit the ripple trim action, it automatically makes your video shorter and back to where it was. And then with the Q, it cuts off everything at the left of the clip and with the W, it cuts off everything on the right of the clip. It's amazing for B-rolls and stuff, but I like having more control with the ripple delete and add edit. But I still want to use it sometimes. So what I did is I put the ripple trim underneath comment Q and comment W. In that way it's as accessible as always because my thumb is next to the command key because it's on the space bar. And I still have like more freedom for the normal add edit and ripple delete which I use more often. That's it for the quickest way to edit A roll. So then, then it's time for B roll. When I'm shooting B roll, I do that often in a different setting, a higher resolution. So I have like more freedom with scaling the clip when I'm editing. But then when you're dragging the video on your timeline, it's too big. So you have to make it smaller. You can do that by going to effect controls and manually scale it smaller. But you can also hit set to frame size or scale to frame size. You do that by hitting the right mouse button and then look for it and then hit it. But when I'm doing a B-roll edit and I have like 20, 50, maybe 100 B-rolls, it's not doable and I want that action to be quick. That's why I made a shortcut for that. It's not already there, but I put set to frame size underneath command 4. Why command 4? That is because normally I'm shooting B-rolls in 4K, so 4. And it's also on the left side of my keyboard, so I still can keep that magic triangle happen. But it's not only for 4K video, of course, it works also with weird sizes of photos, but also vertical video. Another setting when I'm shooting B-roll is that I'm not shooting B-roll in 30 FPS, but more often I shoot it in 60 FPS so I can make it slow motion. And instead of guessing how much I can slow down my footage with the Rage Stretch tool, which by the way is a fantastic tool. If you hit the R on your keyboard, you go to the tool and you can drag your video longer or shorter. It's great for when the length of the video is more important than the exact speed. But for slow motion B-rolls, the exact percentage you slow it down is way more important. And then you have to go to speed and duration. You can go there by hitting your right mouse button and search for it. But it's easier to hit command R. And also for these tools, I recommend you switch around if you use one or the other more often. So the R or command R, you can flip that. One last big shout out to the rolling edit tool. It's a normal tool that it's just in your toolbar. You can go there by hitting the N on your keyboard, but I found out way too late what it exactly does. What it does is it moves a cut. So if you want to move a cut, for example, of two B-rolls that you want to switch between the B-rolls earlier or later, you can hit N and then you can drag the cut closer or further away. So one video is getting shorter than and the other video is getting longer. Probably you already knew about this, but otherwise, my pleasure. So that makes 14 in total, I think. So to hit number 15, the shortcut to like this video is not existing. But if there was just only one thing in this video you did not already knew, then please hit that like button. And also please leave a comment with your favorite shortcut that I did not discuss in this video. Then to end this video, comment, option, K. The shortcut for going to your shortcuts.